Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake De uh, Snowflake Data Cloud Summit here in San Francisco, California. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host and co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE, Dave Vellante. Dave, it has been roughly a year and a half since ChatGPT was unleashed in the world and, and can average consumers really could grasp what AI looks like and feels like, and, but we're still really now still defining the difference between consumer AI and enterprise AI. It's true, I mean, the ROI on consumer AI is very clear. If you can build a bigger GPU cluster, you can sell more ads. Enterprise AI, you know, enterprise have to be a little bit more cautious. As I often say, they're hitting a lot of singles, meaning they're doing some nice little productivity hits, but the really big payback we haven't seen yet. Right, indeed, indeed we haven't. So I'd like to welcome, with that, I'd like to welcome our next guest to the show. His name is Shashir Mer Mer Merotra. He is the co-founder and CEO of Coda. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. See you, man. Yeah. So why don't you start by telling our viewers a little bit about Coda. And why did you start the company? Yes, I exactly, like the yes. Company. Oh, sure, sure, so. Good to have founders on. Yeah, happy to chat about Coda. So um, maybe as context for everybody, we started Coda about nine years ago now. Um, we build an all-in-one doc. It combines the best parts of uh, documents, spreadsheets, presentations, applications, all into one single surface. And the promise is anyone can make a doc as powerful as an app. Uh, it's used by about 50,000 teams around the world, a few million users, uh, everything from uh, taking notes and meetings to running huge applications. So, yeah, Excellent. and why did we start it? And we started it because there's a, my view is that the line between documents and applications is very artificial. And if you look at most companies, they have all these applications on one side, but they spend all their time in documents, spreadsheets, slide decks, so on, and those tools weren't built for that. So we thought we should start from scratch, build a new surface. So we run our company on what you just described. So how could you help us get out of this, this hell that we're in? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's interesting. I, I, I think, first off, the, when I started the company, everybody's first question was, you know, do we actually need you know, new documents, spreadsheet, presentation? And I think it's, it's uh, maybe not obvious to everybody that we've been living with the same model of thinking of those tools since the 1970s. It's really VisiCalc, WordStar, Harvard Graphics. That's what we're working with still. We've just advanced them through different UIs, you know, from green screens to Windows to mobile UIs, the web, and so on. But this idea of start from scratch, build a single surface, is I think sort of changes how teams work. And it, I mean, there's a lot of different ways people use it, uh, but the starting point is if you put it all in one place, you get this one home for your team to operate out of. No more copying and pasting in different places. More, more, no more thousands of tabs to go look at. And then people start building what we call their operating systems out of it. And run planning and decision making and your sales process and you do all your systems in it. So it's really quite I'm fun. I'm really intrigued because we have a pretty complicated workflow. I mean, it's not rocket science, but when you think about when, when somebody wants to bring us to an event, there's, there's, there's travel that goes into a spreadsheet, there's teams that go there, there's all kinds of stuff, and we jumping around, we, yeah. we, we're doing it now. We're jumping from a doc, from the spreadsheet. Oh, I you watched know, it. We got, we got I checked PowerPoint. in on the spreadsheet, you sent me my questions in the doc, a, you know, all those things are completely disconnected. I go back to the PowerPoint to, with the show prep, and so you would integrate all those yeah. into a single application. That's right. That's right. Okay, and yeah. so I don't have to context switch and go down to cul-de-sac and come back out. Yeah, and one of the key things, and it sort of led to why we're here as well, is we actually not only integrate those surfaces, but we build a platform we call PAX. And so PAX are the uh, kind of extensions in Coda. They allow you to bring any other piece of information to Coda as well. And so there's a few hundreds of these that are publicly available, and then thousands more that have been built inside companies. So you can take Coda and you can put not only your doctor spreadsheets on, but all your data from Salesforce or Jira or, or from your task tracking systems or your analytic system, and you can pull it all into one surface that you know, all the knowledge workers in your company can use to build data-informed decisions, meetings, whatever they need to do. You know who I thought would have built something like this is Steve Jobs. Seriously. Open dot. All, all in one, right? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but no. I mean, I, I think there's, a, there's been a, they, he tried, you know, yeah, open, no, open try, doc was so definitely a, a path in that direction. It's not, I think there's something about this time frame that people are all of a sudden comfortable. I think a lot of it comes from the web. Is that, you know, everybody who tried in the past, Jobs tried, there's actually a similar product at Microsoft at one point, tried to build a single document format, and all of them suffered from, before you move to the web, it's just very hard to, to make that work. 
Okay. So it sounds as though this is a moment, and I know that Snowflake Ventures has recently invested in Coda. Um, tell us a little bit about that partnership and how you, you can use Coda Brain to help your customers turn data into action. Yeah, so I'm really excited about it. We just announced it here today. Uh, we're building a new product, it's called Coda Brain. It's, I call it the, the Coda Snowflake Coda Sandwich. <laughs> and the, uh, so we're building it with, mostly with the Snowflake Cortex team. Uh, Sridhar talked a little bit about it in the keynote uh, yesterday, and it came from a, a fun discussion I was having with the Snowflake team, Christian, Sridhar, and so on, about how enterprise AI and consumer AI are, are different. And this is sort of where you, where you started. And what we realized was we had a shared vision of what, how we're going to tackle that difference. In the consumer AI world, we're all used to uh, this wonderful assistant, many of us learned on ChatGPT, it just feels amazing. You can talk to this, it feels like a person. It write everything on the internet. Kind of a dorky but, person, but yes. Kind of a, a dorky person. person. <laughs> I like to call it a, an incredibly over-enthusiastic <laughs> intern. <Yeah. laughs> um, Who sometimes uh, messes up, but sometimes yeah. Sometimes messes yeah. up. Uh, knows a lot about a lot of things, but nothing about you. Um, and so you take that, and everybody's vision, you talk to any customer, you say, what do you want in your company this year? What, what do you, I want that. I want ChatGPT for my company. Everybody wants the same thing. And then you realize that, oh, actually the steps in doing that are not really just about building bigger models and so on. There's actually a bunch of really hard challenges. You know, for example, when I come and say, uh, what's our vacation policy? I expected to know our vacation policy, not like somebody else's. Uh, when I come and say, you know, give me a list of customers that ordered with us last year or have spent more than this much money, I expect a tabular result with a data source. Um, uh, probably the most fun example is I come in and I say, um, who's getting promoted next week, I want everybody to get slightly different answers. And to build something like that, you have to start with a different approach. And so, that's what we're building, it's called Coda Brain. The sandwich is, basically, we took uh, Coda Packs, so that's the basis of this system, is that's the brain. So you come to Coda Brain, either the admin or the user, goes and sets up whatever systems you want to integrate into the Coda Brain, and one of the key things we do is we, we preserve all the permissions so we know who has access to every different entity. Then in the middle of the stack is the Snowflake Cortex stack, and we basically use all of it. So it's the it's Cortex Search, it's the, uh, the Cortex um, Analyst, uh, uh, how they announced it today. Um, and then on top of that, we've built a RAG-based chatbot where you just come and ask questions, and it gives you back responses. And you're using, what, Snowflake's embedded vector database, or? Yeah, You're that's right. You're getting access to all this stuff early? That's right, so they, the, yeah, we've been pushing the limits on all of those different parts. It's, uh, uh, you know, if you think about the challenges here, the, the way it works, you come to Coda Brain, you ask a question, so, uh, the, it's a RAG-based model, so if people aren't familiar with the term, it's a multi-step process where you do retrieval, augmentation generation. The hard part of retrieval starts with, I need to pick a data source, I need to go check permissions. So we use uh, Snowflake Cortex Search to pick uh, the set of records, and then just the underlying role-based ACL control to fi filter out what do you have access to and what do you not have access to. Uh, and then we take that, we hand it to the LLM, and we generate a response. We also do a whole other path. If you, answer, if you ask a question that we determine to be a structured question, we'll return you a table. So we'll return you a live result from you know, your Salesforce data set or Jira data set, what, whatever it might be, and we use Cortex Analyst to go generate the SQL for it. One of the neat tricks we do is we'll not only return the data, we'll return the filters in a way that you can understand them. Um, so that you can, un you can have confidence in the data that was handed back to you. So yeah, so all of it is working together with, I think we use every part of the so Cortex So what are you hearing from customers? What's the early customer, I mean, we know that Dave Vellante is intrigued, but what, what, I got more questions. <laughs> what else are you, <laughs> what else are you hearing? I mean, at a, at a high level, that's the dream, right? So everybody starts with, you know, first question is they can, can understand my data. It's a, you know, it, it, all of it is not useful unless it integrates with my data. Uh, and we integrate with about 500 different data sources. Um, and then there's, it's easy to add thousands more. So everybody's got their, their list of how, how they want to do that. Next thing I want to know is, uh, can it handle both unstructured and structured questions? And it, it just turns out we don't, we don't ask out of ChatGPT that much, but inside a company, you often want a list. You want a, you want a data set, you want a chart. You want a, so I think that's really important. Um, probably the next thing we get asked is permissions, is how do you handle permissions? Uh, almost everybody I've talked to has had some team that went off and built a rag-based chatbot. Sometimes here, I mean, they even did it on stage. 
in, in, uh, in a couple minutes. I thought Christian. Show sure, you the Cube AI. Yeah, it's, <laughs> and it's, it's, very, it's very cool. But the, the hard part is almost everybody builds one, and they either start with a really small data set that you know, is shared with the whole company, it's your brand guidelines, or your, you know, your support book, or so on. And then they point it at something else, and it leaks information. And now somebody asks a question, and they shut the whole project down. It feels risky. It feels very risky. And so I think that idea of like, I want a chatbot that actually understands my permissions is, is really challenging. And then the other thing we're hearing a lot is can you take that and not just answer questions, but actually take action with what comes back. And one of the big things we've done is you can take any result from Code of Brain and you can add it to a doc and immediately becomes a live query. And it's a normal table. You can go add columns to it. We have a bunch of capabilities in Coda where you can construct what we call buttons, which can take action. So you can say, a uh, simple example I got from a customer was, I want a list of users in every account, and I want as soon as some score gets above a certain number, I want to auto-invite them to a webinar. And now I just add the column, I add a button, I, 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 I create what in Coda we call an automation, and you can kind of finish the journey of not just an assistant that helps me answer questions, but an assistant that actually takes a tedious task to make work out of my job. So there's a little bit of, obviously, you got, some, you got a data platform here. You've got, there's a little bit of like RPA-ish automation. Yeah, we get compared RPA, the on. no code, low code. We, get, we hear lots of those comparisons. Okay, yeah. so you said 500 data, data sources. Yeah. All right, so again, coming back to me. So, <laughs> Emails, I got yeah. Google yeah. Sheets, yeah. Uh, Google Docs, yeah. I got uh, all kinds of spreadsheets all over the place. Yeah. Presumably those are Easy. like yeah. ground ball to second base. Right, right, that's the starting point. Yeah. Right, okay, yeah. and so what do I need? I need Snowflake, I need a AWS account, which I got, I need. You actually don't, so we do actually. Do not need Snowflake? You don't, it runs on Snowflake, okay. but actually one of the interesting parts is we can use your Snowflake instance or we can use our own. Um, so that's actually quite interesting to many customers as I'm, I'm trying to get started here. I think that's particularly interesting to the Snowflake team because one of the core insights behind this project is we'll take the data warehouse we create, the Code of Brain backend, and we'll actually make it available to your data team. So your, you know, your non-technical knowledge workers will come to this Brain UI, they can ask any question they like, but we'll actually take the underlying data warehouse and make it available to your data and developer teams as well. And the reason that's so important is I think that basically every company has to completely rebuild their data backends for being ready for RAG. And to do a good RAG-based chatbot, which is what everybody wants, you need your data warehouse to understand things at an entity level, it needs to be pre-encoded with embeddings, and it needs all the ACLs on every row. And that needs to be kept up to date on a constant basis. And nobody's data architecture starts with that assumption. So part of the reason I think the Snowflake team is so excited about this project, they're very excited about any application of Cortex. But the other thing that happens is, we show up, we say, actually we're going to build you a new data warehouse that is ready for your de developer team to actually go build any chatbot or anything else you want to on that. So, I'm trying to think of how I would do this without code. I, I, could, could, I, I could use a document database, maybe? Yeah, so the, the hard part is you have to build every integration and synchronize for every system. So I'll give you an example. So if you went and said, I want, if you want to synchronize in your, um, your support docs, that's straightforward. You take a bunch of PDFs, you load it to a column in Snowflake, straightforward. If you go to a system like uh, Google Drive, so you gave the example of Google Docs, Google Sheets, so on, they actually have one API, it's called the Meta API, where you can say, give me all the data, including the ACLs. You want to do the same thing with Salesforce, it's not very easy to do. Because in Salesforce, you can come in and you can write uh, permissions that say, you know, reps in this team can only see orders that are less than a million dollars and non-government accounts and blah, blah, blah. How are you going to know that that's a set of orders that can go to that set of people? So you have to build every one of those connectors and then keep them up to date. So I think what we're going to see is a lot of people are going to come in, they're very excited about it. Everybody wants ChatGPT for your company. Easy to train it on the universally available data. Then you'll go build some for some relatively easy to synchronize data sources that are very large. But then as you get to the tail, it's very hard to go build those things with the permission model in mind. And, so and hallucinations though, which are a huge headache, yeah. have you found ways to, to, to mitigate I, that? I, am, I'm, I think the hallucination problem, if we think it's big in the consumer world, it's enormous in the enterprise world. In the consumer world, honestly, we all kind of tolerate it. It's even kind of fun sometimes. <laughs> right? there's, a, there's some use cases for it. The enterprise world is completely not tolerable. So I, there's, a couple, there's a couple things about hallucinations. So first off, if you picture the code of brain UI, you come, you ask a question, 
will generally either give you an unstructured result or a structured result. So we'll turn you a paragraph, a sentence, um, says here's what we think, or we'll turn you a table. Each case, that how to deal with hallucinations is a slightly different approach. So when you hand back an unstructured result, the, the typical way to handle that is citations. And I think the Cortex team has done a really nice job of interleaving how you know, one of the hard parts of the generation phase of RAG is you, you take all of these different data uh, documents, you pull back, you know, sometimes a multi-paragraph answer, and in each part, you don't just want, here's the multi-paragraph answer and here's all the data sources, you want to interleave. This one sentence came from here. This sentence came from here. That's really important. I think the Cortex team has done a nice job of that, and we plumbed that through. The other side, if I hand you a structured data set, you want some confidence that you got the query right, you got the filter right, you understand where it's coming from. I was talking to a customer earlier where the query they wanted was, can you give me uh, all customer feedback about this feature? Yeah. Fairly reasonable thing to go ask. And it came, it came back with a list that that doesn't seem right. And you could immediately, in the Coda Brain UI, we'll hand you back the data set, but all the, we'll take the SQL and we'll translate back to active filters so you can go and change them. And say, oh, I understand. It thought that it should look at this column, but actually wrong. And they went and changed, they asked again, and they got a slightly better version, got better and better and better. And I think it's you take hallucinations, you turn it to your advantage. Explain to me what you're doing, and let me go help you fix it. And so that, that I think, is the answer to, to how to handle hallucinations in the enterprise. The nice part is that usually in the enterprise there is, there's a truth. So if you can hand people where you came from, so unstructured, here's my citation, the structured, here's my query, here's my filters, I think we have a better answer for how but to But it get. takes the human understanding that that's not quite right. Yeah, I mean the human, the human is part of the loop. I mean, it's a, this is not a, we're not trying to get rid of the human, we're trying to enable the human. Right. And, and same problem, if you went to an analyst, and you said, hey, can you give me the list of customers who asked about this feature, your analysts may misunderstand you too. And so I think this idea of you get back a report, like that can't possibly be right. And you say, oh, you misunderstood me. I meant this feature, look for this thing. That's, I think, what you want. And I think this idea of can we iterate with the user and the AI system, that's a loop I think you want uh, for, for a product like this. So obviously it's really interesting. And so basically, like you said, everybody's built a rag. It's kind of getting trite. They're not getting value out of it. So how do you think this will change the, the ROI equation in enterprise? I mean, I, I would say most RAG applications I've seen so far don't get ROI because they get shut down. They, get, they don't reach scale. Right? So you, because of this issue with data sources is I think the Snowflake team has made it so easy to do the middle of the sandwich. <laughs> they've, they've made it so easy to go and come up with the great embeddings, do this hybrid ranking model that Cortex is doing, has outperformed every benchmark we can come up with, the, uh, the analyst can give you this text to SQL thing. But if you, if, you don't, if you start with this tiny set of data, then the chances you're going to build something that's actually useful to your company, it's just not that obvious. I mean, you, you, I, the number of companies I've seen trained on, we built a RAGBOT trained on our brand guidelines, it's like, how, what, what ROI are you going to get out of, how many times does somebody need to know? You know, what's our, what are our brand guidelines? So you have to get to the harder data sets. I need to get to Salesforce, I need to get to your email, I need to get to Slack, I need to get to our tickets, I need to get to our HR system. I need to be able to come and say, you know, how many employees left because of this reason, or how many employees did we hire with this background. Then you get real value out of it. The second thing I'd say is everybody focused too much on just the answer part. Now I've got an answer, but I need to take that and repeat that process over and over and over again. They say, and then you need to connect it to a surface that allows you to take action, allows you to turn that into a repeatable thing, not a one-time thing. So I think that's how we're going to get ROI out of RAG. What about video? I mean, video is a data source like everything else. I mean, I, this is a great example of where I think the work that the, I'm just so excited about, the pace at which the Cortex team is creating embedding models for anything. And so this idea of like, can you chunk video? Can you get transcription out of it? Can you embed it, so on. I mean, it's all, we're sort of building on all of, it seems like almost every week, there's a new thing the Cortex team has come up with on what they can do there. So. But the previous problem you talk about, I, 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 if I understand it, it's like having a consistent answer over time. Right. I mean, one of the challenges we have, I'd love to have you help, help us solve this, is things change over time, right? right. It's, we're ingesting video, doing transcribing that video, right. and then we want to ask questions. Like, yeah. what were the top 10 takeaways from Snowflake Summit yeah. in 2024? Boom. Yeah. And then, you know, if you ask that question, it's going to mix 23, 24, it might mix 2015. 
yeah. for all we know. Yeah. It'll do that sometimes. Yeah, I mean the so, starting point of that is, and, and video, I mean video is very hot, but like you, you guys are a very specific example with the show. I mean I think the one we see all the time is uh, meeting recordings, and everybody wants their version of a chatbot over meeting recordings. Uh, I, I would say probably the most obvious example. And it's tricky because actually ingesting video and getting transcription is mostly a solved problem. Right. At, at this point, that's not that hard. The hard part is, who's supposed to have access to that? So I should be able to come and say, you know, in how many meetings did we talk about Cortex? I should get an answer, but only the meetings I was in and only the meetings I should have access to. And so I think that's really the, the, the challenge of, of building an end-to-end -end solution. But interestingly, I, I think the core part of can I transcribe video and turn it into text and turn it into embeddings and can I rank it and can I do a vector search, that technology all exists. It's just the packaging around it that hasn't. But that's you know. a confined data set, right? Imagine if you had, if you had to, well, maybe you, 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 you can have solve this problem. Assume you have access to 1,000 meetings. Yeah. And you want to know, okay, what happened you know, in those 1,000 meetings? It's not, it's not, I mean, it's, that's what most companies are, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, these days, you record everything. I mean, every Zoom meeting is recorded, it's not that confined. I mean, every day, there's thousands of new meetings generated with thousands of different attendees, and in some cases, I want everybody to have access, and in some cases, I only want But I people. want the insights across oh, meetings. That's right. Right? That's right. And you so can help me do that. That's right, so you go and you say, a meeting's a document, just like everything else, and you go and you say, this is who had access, the default policy is the people who are in it, and you can go, and almost every platform, Zoom and so on, have some way to go change those ACLs. And so we ingest Zoom recordings and we do this inside Coda all the time. What were the biggest gripes that came out this week and what were the best ideas that came out this week yeah. in all of our, our, our meetings? I think that's And uh, you can solve that problem. For sure, I mean I think the, the gripes, you know, tell me, like sales conversations are a really common one. Right. Tell me how many sales calls talked about Feature X or talked about this, this uh, conversation, but yeah, those are all. And I don't need Snowflake, you're saying. So it's, you, you can bring your own Snowflake or you can use ours. Okay, yeah, so I do yeah. need Snowflake. Yeah, we run entirely yeah. on Snowflake. Okay, 100% yeah. then, yeah. I, th yeah. I misunderstood yeah, before. Yeah. Sorry, okay. I just meant that you don't have to already be using Snowflake. No, got it. And okay. I think part of the reason that's so exciting is we become a path to, I'm not, I don't know if I want to be on Snowflake yet, then this is a path to say, but I need a rag-based backend. I'm going to use Code of Brain to fill uh, my Snowflake. So I see Code of Brain. Yeah. I don't see Snowflake. Until you ask for it, and then we'll give you the backend and you can query it directly. Shashir, you definitely have theCUBE's attention, so <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the go show. Gotta go already? <laughs> I know. Uh, Ran yes. out of time. Yeah, this is almost a sales call here, so there you go. Thank you so much for <laughs> coming on theCUBE, really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of the Snowflake Data Cloud Summit. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis.